Today, I'll be reviewing Park City Mountain Resort in Park City, Utah. I'm used to reviewing bike parks, but ski resorts have way more runs and things to talk about. This means I won't be able to talk about every single small detail, but hopefully you can get a good idea of this mountain by the end of the video. The structure of this video won't be like a traditional bike park. I'll be rating Park City in 10 categories on a scale of 0 to 10, meaning a 100 is the highest possible. A 5 out of 10 is dead average, and a 1 is completely terrible. If you disagree with me on any of these, just keep in mind that my visit was strictly based off one two-day trip. Some people may have better experiences than I did, and some worse, but I'm basing this review off of my personal experience here. Without further ado, let's jump into the categories. First up is off-mountain activities. This is pretty much anything within close proximity of the resort that can entertain and keep you busy. In Park City, you won't be missing out on things to do. If I listed everything, this category alone would be 30 minutes long, so I'll briefly talk about the main activities to do. Just a short distance away from the main village is Main Street. Here, you could spend a whole day without getting bored. They have many restaurants here with a whole array of foods, along with plain old shops of the ski resorts. Main Street is also home to multiple art galleries where you can see artists painting in their studios live. This was very cool because when you come back a day later, the paintings are done and ready to be sold. Main Street also has other things besides these, such as a cinema which is closed now. About 10 minutes away is the Utah Olympic Park, home to the training site of Olympic skiers. In the winter, there's ski jumping, a bobsled course, and racing. In the summer, they have a cool pool for tricks and a whole activity course. Outside of Main Street and the Olympic Park, both the Park City and Canyon side have a village with bars and more shops. I give it a 9 out of 10 for being well above average with endless options if you want a break from skiing. Let's talk about the pricing. At Park City, everything is priced exactly on average. A meal is the same cost as your typical large ski resort, so nothing special there. Just like regular skiing tradition, a soda will be 5 bucks on the mountain where you can pick one up for half the price at the local grocery store. The main goal for them is profit, so I give PCMR a 5 for being exactly what you'd expect at a large ski resort. I will say though, off the mountain you can find some standard pricing, but the trend follows as you get farther from the resort, the cheaper things become. The third category is food. On the mountain, there's many options, ranging from the barbecue house to the Red Pine Lodge. Due to the current circumstances though, the food isn't as good as normal, but I'll score this accordingly. Off the mountain, the food in the PCMR area is amazing. If you're a fan of Mexican food or traditional American food, this is the place for you. On the first night, we ate at the Tarahumara restaurant. This is a Mexican place only a two minute drive from the mountain villages. You can't go wrong with their amazing chips and salsa, and their burritos are top notch. Another great Mexican restaurant is Billy Blanco's. They also have a decent salsa variety and great entrees. My favorite place is called Devonza's with the best cheesesteaks I've ever had. I mean, this stuff is good. While the ski food is okay, the off-mountain food brings the score of Park City up to a 7. There are options for everyone here. One of the most important factors for a lot of people is the runs and ski slopes themselves, specifically the quality and variety you find here. At this mountain, you can truly find every type of run imaginable, from easier groomers to tree skiing, to steeper moguls, and to pure double black powder runs. Park City absolutely nails it. This place is very suitable for everyone, therefore creating their slogan, there is only one. I was a huge fan of the sheer quantity that Park City offers. On the other hand, the trail quality isn't quite as good. Lots of people ski and ride the runs, and it shows. In some spots, moguls were pure ice cubes, and the powder was all washed away. Still, I had a few runs that are my favorites. On the top of the McConkie's Express is McConkie's Bolt. This is a double black steep run with powder all day. When we visited, there was over a foot of new snow up here, so the bowl was tons of fun. At the bottom, there's also a cool little gully you can ski through. If you're looking for groomer laps, you can never go wrong with Echo and Boa. Both on the far right of the canyon side, these blue groomers are fast and fun for either a warm-up or a chill lap. 
You can access these by taking the Sun Peak and Super Condor Expresslets. Park City will earn an 8 for their quality and variety due to having some of the most diverse terrain and decent condition. Following that, we have the lifts, and the entire lift system for that matter. How well is it organized, how are the lifts maintained, and how old are they? At every ski resort, the lift system should be designed efficiently, so to get above a 5, this place needs to have an amazing system. I give Park City a 7. Whether you want to take a gondola, bubble chair, or anything in between, Park City will have it. Most of their lifts are older and from the 1990s, but they do run lifts built recently as well. Even the older lifts are well maintained and get you up to the top quickly and safely. So far, I've said pretty much all positives about the lifts, so you may wonder why I'm taking 3 points away, and here's why. Pre-2017, Park City and Canyons were completely separate ski areas, and now they've combined. Though the mountains do gain significant elevation, this place is wide. Unlike neighboring Deer Valley where I'd probably give it a 9, most of the lifts are connectors. For example, if you want to ski McConkie's Bowl, it requires 3 lifts to get there. This is not a bad system, but an option to directly transfer between lifts without traversing is preferred. Also, I've heard that lines can get really long because they only have one lift servicing an area. Now don't get me wrong, this place still does have a great lift selection, that's why I'm giving it a 7, I just think it could be a little bit better. Next up is scenery. Let's take a moment to appreciate these parabolic snow covered hills. In all honesty, the scenery at Park City wouldn't earn many points for most people, but from Washington State where we have huge forests and tall trees, this is a lot different. I'll give the resort an 8 for being above average. Next is the ease of access. How simple is it to make the trip here? For PCMR, it's about as easy as you can get, so I'll give it a 9. If you live in any state, you can get a fairly cheap flight into Salt Lake City, Utah. From there, it's about a 30 minute drive to the town of Park City. If you take a long weekend, you can easily ski for 3 days without missing anything. Unlike the Colorado ski resorts where a 2 hour drive from the airport is required, Park City access is very straightforward. Logistics is the next category. This includes lift lines and the overall details of the resort. I'm going to give Park City a 5, and here's why. As I said earlier, the upper mountain received 15 inches of new snow overnight, causing some of the longest lines ever. We asked locals if the lines ever get this long, and they said only on a powder day. By lunchtime, we only got three full runs in, one of them being the warm-up. The crowd seemed to die down later, but the morning was a disaster. PCMR also has mountain tours which we didn't get around to doing, but that's still a nice touch. For parking, it's an average system where the later you come, the farther you'll be from the base. On the mountain itself, it's also important to have easy access between zones. Going between Park City and Canyons is an absolute nightmare. It can take up to 5 lifts to get there with no skiing involved. It doesn't help that the Quicksilver Gondola closes at 3.32, meaning your day on the opposite side can be cut an hour short. The final part of logistics is the way they are handling people. They're doing a terrible job, and when I say terrible, I mean it. Vail Resorts is not limiting the amount of people that enter the mountain, creating massive lines that can't be avoided. The staff at Park City will dictate the score of the next category. When we visited, they were completely average, a 5 out of 10. Nobody stood out as very helpful and kind, but they weren't bad either. They were just doing their job as instructed, but didn't go above and beyond. The final category I have for Park City is the grooming. How many runs are groomed, is there variety, and is it done well? Park City grooms a lot of runs each night, so if that's all you ski, you'll have lots of fun here. The quality of the grooming is average for a ski resort, but since they groom a lot more runs than most other large resorts, I'll give them a 7 here. Before we finish, I want to have a bonus category worth no points, and that's COVID safety. At Park City, they aren't doing the best job. There were people in lift lines making sure masks were worn, but as I said earlier, there isn't a maximum capacity, so it's hard to manage everyone. Still, lots of people didn't wear masks at all, or they had them on incorrectly. If this was worth points, I'd give them a 3, but since this is temporary, it's just a mention. When we add up all these scores, Park City gets a 70 out of 100. This means the mountain is well above average. Don't go in thinking it's a perfect resort, but if you want to visit, I think it's a good idea. With it being so easy to access, the food being great and plenty to do, I would recommend this mountain to everyone who enjoyed skiing. Remember, this was based off my experience only. 
Keep in mind that yes, this is one of the top resorts in the country, but my experience probably wasn't quite as good as most people's. It was cloudy with long lines, plus Park City received below average snowfall this season. I still really enjoyed my time here though. That's going to wrap up this review and thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the review of Deer Valley coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next week.